in his 13th century treatise, The Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices, codified the mechanical principles that would take us into the modern era. This text is one of the most important records of engineering development of any period in history. It contains designs for more than 50 machines, each described in meticulous detail in order that other engineers could use them as blueprints and replicate these complex devices. We challenged a leading British model maker, Richard Windley, to recreate one of Al Jazeera's automated machines, a device which used a candle to calibrate the passage of time. He even laid down the materials the candle should be made from, the precise dimensions of the candle, and even the materials that the wick of the candle should be made from. Al Jazeera describes four candle clocks in his treatise, the most sophisticated in existence. It works on the basis of a candle slowly burning and altering through a series of pulleys and cords, a dial from which the time could be read off. The Islamic day was divided up unequally. The daylight hours and the nighttime hours were different, so that made the whole system even more complicated. But Al Jazeera's solution was deceptively simple. And what we basically got is the candle burning away, being pushed upwards. As the wax melts and burns away, the candle gradually rises. This lead weight is going to descend like so. And in the process, pulls this cord here, which passes over a pulley and round an axle shaft. This is the shaft that's connected to the pointer on the dial from which the time can be read off. This splendid example of a small-scale precision timekeeping device also uses a simple mechanism found in most households today. It's fairly important that there's some sort of device to hold the cap against the pressure of the weight underneath. And uh, what Jazari did was to use a little kind of L-shaped clip system. And the atlas almost identical what we now call a bayonet fitting. It's curious that after sort of 1800 years, we're still using a, an intrinsically similar device. But there's more. One of the most detailed sections in Al Jazeera's treatise is dedicated to water clocks that demonstrate the enduring principles of hydraulics. In these pages, he describes some of the most elaborate mechanical devices for measuring time ever. One in particular represents an outstanding technological achievement that can still pose a challenge for today's reconstructors. Today, it is called the Elephant Clock. In the Ibn Battuta Mall in Dubai, MTE Studios have made a large-scale working replica of Al Jazeera's masterpiece. Over 150 experts worked on this 7-meter-high, 7-ton mega clock. It was a massive undertaking that required over 11,000 man-hours to complete. Ludo Verheyen is the director of the Al Jazeera Elephant Clock Reconstruction Project. This project was quite a challenge because indeed it was the first time that these features have been reconstructed ever. It is complicated. The inventor from 800 years ago, Al Jazeera, was a great inventor. So to learn from his manuscripts in a very accurate way how the mechanics actually worked is quite, uh, quite fabulous. But how does this magnificent object actually work? And how did Al Jazeera improve so emphatically on the timing devices of his ancestors? Amazingly, the elephant clock consists of several mechanisms that match those used in modern engineering quite closely. Inside the belly of the elephant is a submersible float with a small hole in it. It's calibrated to produce a specific flow of water. This determines the rate at which the float sinks and therefore the time at which the clock strikes. Submergence of the float activates a trip mechanism which sets a series of events in motion that mark the passage of time and strike the hour. At this point, the float is tilted out of the water, emptying its contents. It then rests on the surface of the water and the cycle is repeated. The clock employs automata, such as a chiming cymbal and a chirping bird, to mark the passing of the hours. For its time, it is a very complicated clock in the sense that it has automatic feedback and this continues almost like a perpetual motion machine. The elephant clock is one of the finest examples of advanced technology from the golden age of Eastern civilization. So it's a unique combination of art and architecture and also engineering. 
The engineers of the East made huge progress in developing technologies that built on the innovations of previous civilizations. But their great minds were also responsible for the creation of ingenious, terrifying weapons of war. They used a form of highly refined gunpowder. It was manufactured to a formula that used common ingredients, which were in plentiful supply, including willow charcoal and saltpeter. By combining them, you turn relatively innocuous components into the driving force of warfare for nearly a thousand years. Gunpowder was invented in China, but in its early stages, the compound was not explosive enough to be lethal on the battlefield. New evidence suggests that the scientists of the East devised a more potent formula that could be deployed with deadly effect. It's not until the 12th century, 13th century, when we start to get the mixtures refined to such a way as you can effectively drive rockets, torpedoes, cannons, handguns, and everything we're familiar with ever since. But it was Hassan al rama who was the man who really put it down in writing and made it clear. In the 13th century, Hassan al rama wrote a book on military technology that included recipes for gunpowder. So profound was his knowledge, we may have to re-examine our understanding of the history of warfare. In his work, Hassan al rama documents what is believed by some to be the first rocket in history, designed specifically for combat. He lists 22 different recipes for the powder for rockets and different forms of rocket. He's really the father of rocketry. In the same period, military engineers also built another weapon that harnessed the explosive property of gunpowder, the cannon. In Spain and North Africa, at the end of the 14th century, 